What's up guys? It's good to be back in the saddle making videos again. I took about a week off. How dare you? So thanks for letting me do that. I just needed to get my bearings, set some goals, do some journaling, get ready for a big 2020. And the first thing I want to do of the many videos I have planned is just get caught up on some of the music that might have gotten buried under the holiday stuff, things that came out in December, new singles that have been announced. There's tons of new country music to listen to. <laughs> And I want to get into it, and I already have, and I'm shooting this again because the first time I shot this video, everything went all wrong, technically. So, we're doing it again, and uh, let's jump into it. Oh yeah, and I wanted to say that I just posted a new shirt in the merch shop, which is in its fledgling stages, but it just says, Thick it for our favorite saying on this channel. Thick it. Go check that out if you want to and give this video a like and share it and all my links, everything's down in the description down below. First up, let's talk about Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani's new single, Nobody But You. I really like what Blake Shelton has been doing since Texahoma Shore. I really like the gothic dark vibe of God's Country, but everything that has come after God's Country has been so scattershot. I can't get a handle on what Blake Shelton is trying to do as an artist, and I guess that makes sense because he's kind of done, he says, with albums and is just putting out song after song after song, and it sure feels that way because after God's Country came Hell Right, which was much more like dumb, fun, dumb southern rock and then he had like jesus got a tight grip which was like religious and way more twangy and now he's got this duet which is kind of this soft pop rock duet with gwen stefani which for the life of me i cannot remember this song it is like as bland as bland as bland could be it just makes me feel very little um there's way too much production happening on all of the vocals and it's just like syrupy and layered in production and it doesn't sound good it just makes me want to hear nobody but me which is also by blake shelton and a way better song then i want to talk about getting good by lauren elena maybe that's when life starts getting good I really root for Lauren Elena. One of the first videos on this channel was me reacting to her album Road Less Traveled. And I think she has a lot of spunk as an entertainer. I think she has an incredible voice. I think she has had a very interesting and difficult life. And I think she has a lot of things to say when she chooses to say them. Whether that's on a song like uh, Same Day, Different Bottle, which I'm always going to be angry, was not a single. Uh, whether it's on Three, about the struggles of being a traveling musician or whether it is on even something like Painting Pillows or Think Outside the Boy. This girl's got great songs in her, but some of the choices made around her career are infuriating to me. And unfortunately, I think getting good while it is a good song is not gonna do much to change that. I mean, the sound of this song is okay. I think there's way too much of a snap track in the beginning, which does not serve the song well, in my opinion, at all, and it makes what should feel really tender, just a lot more synthetic and poppy. And we hang up the, phone before I know it. the content of this song is actually really interesting. It's about Lauren asking why she feels bad if she keeps getting things she wants. You know, she used to think she wanted money, but she got it. It didn't fill the hole in her heart. Same thing happened with love. And so she's trying to experience this gratitude and she gets to this statement, once I learn to bloom right where I'm planted, Maybe that's when life starts getting good. And then the chorus goes on and says getting good repeatedly. And that line actually reveals my issue with this song, which is that it feels like it's trying to eat its cake and have it too. It's trying to kind of come at you from this place of gratitude and warm inspiration. And yet she's saying like, maybe that's when life starts getting good, which suggests that's not where she's at now. And so sort of the vibe of the song and the and the feeling that it is trying to evoke it doesn't really work to me because you're not there yet this is a thing that you're saying in the lyrics you haven't done yet and i know the last line of the song she says like my life's already good but to me it's just like a little awkward and doesn't quite work and i think that's a really big problem it kind of reminds me of her single doing fine which was about her coping with all of these changes in her life and in her parents' marriage and she's doing fine. She's not doing great and she's not doing badly, but to me, she seems like she's really compelled by this idea of coping with the challenges of life, but I don't know that it makes the most emotional, intense, 
inspiring arc for a song. It just sort of feels a little bit more like that's better for an Instagram caption, but some of the bigger swings she's taken in other songs, to me, are the way bigger things that she should be putting out as singles. That said, her voice sounds beautiful on this song because it is beautiful, and the subject matter is certainly substantive, which I like to see, but I don't know that I see this really moving the needle for her, especially because A, women don't really get played all that much on country radio, and B, she's like the featured girl on every dude's song in country music right now. First it was What Ifs with Kane Brown, I'll blame it on Whiskey with John Party, and then she's on the next song I wanna talk about too. Yeah, the next one is One Beer by Hardy, featuring Devin Dawson and Lauren Elena. I was very, 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 very surprised that One Beer was chosen as the next single from Hardy's Hicks tape because frankly, that album is loaded with radio-friendly jams that go down easy, that are not gonna challenge the audience that much. They're just sort of fun party jams about hanging out in your hometown, being from the South, wearing a camo hat, drinking some beers, wh whatever, all those things. We got My Kind of Living, which I think is my favorite melody on the whole record, Redneck Tendencies, which has some really clever lyrics on it, and then Nothing Out Here, which is the song featuring Thomas Rhett that feels like that might be the obvious smash here. And I am really surprised they went with one beer, but I'm excited about that. This is a song about an unplanned pregnancy and the drunken hookup that started with one beer and ultimately resulted in a baby. And it's really down to earth in a way. It feels really grounded and a little bit serious compared to a lot of the maybe curated, candy-coated, southern party songs on the rest of this record. The vibe of it is definitely like a little bit hip-hop, pop influence, then Hardy has a way of sort of finding interesting cadences. The whole thing of like, one beer turns into a lit cigarette, uh, da, 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 da. like it's interesting, it's different. And I'll take different or interesting any day of the week over just countryer for the sake of being countryer. I really like the details in this song. I like the two pink lines and the CVS parking lot. And I like the, the picture on the fridge and it's kind of interesting how it's set up. This is like almost a free verse poem of just little images, but you're able to follow the story of this guy and girl that uh, hooked up, got drunk, and then end up starting a family. And the bridge of this song is this kind of almost nursery rhyme, schoolyard playground thing where it says, Boy and a girl and a three on the tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. And that's the kind of stuff I love in Hardy's writing, that it feels like we're now singing this little jingle that five-year-olds sing, but it works because we're talking about a three-year-old that is now uh, part of the family and celebrating Christmas with them, and it just kind of paints this little picture for you. I think it's pretty clever. I think it's pretty weird. I like that it doesn't get sentimental. I love songs like There Goes My Life by Kenny Chesney, but I kind of like that this song doesn't necessarily romanticize, like, oh, it's so great that we had a baby. It just kind of, it is what it is. You know, this guy and this girl are still drinking together. They're still together, but this baby happened and it just feels like real life. And I feel like that is so much of what country music's about. Even if this song doesn't sound the countryest on that record, I just think it's kind of cool. And I think given the nature of this song, it's nice having a girl's voice on it. So Lauren really works well there. And I think some of her kind of I don't know, overtones add a lot to it, actually. Then we got Bluebird by Miranda Lambert. This is the second single off Miranda Lambert's Wild Card after It All Comes Out in the Wash, which was fun, but frivolous. And I think this is a really excellent song about how Miranda rolls with the punches through life. You know, she says, if life gives me lemons, I just mix them in my drink. And she has a wild card up her sleeve. The song's really about keeping it moving and taking the punches and turning that pain into music. She says, I keep a light on in my soul and the bluebird in my heart. And what the Bluebird is, is a reference to the Bluebird Cafe, a very famous establishment in Nashville. It's kind of a rite of passage for songwriters to go play to this little room of like 20 people and sing their songs there. And I think this song will probably win like song of the year because it feels um, so close to the Nashville experience. I think voters will be charmed by that. I'm not sure whether the mainstream audience is really going to pick up on, oh, this is a reference to the Bluebird Cafe. Um, and for them, maybe just bluebirds will be a symbol of hope. Like uh, uh, somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. 
I think maybe it could work on that level for them, but I do think this is going to be an industry fave, maybe a little bit more than it's going to be a like mainstream favorite. But I think the writing on it is superb, and that always happens when Natalie Hemby and Miranda Lambert get together, and in this case, they're with Luke Dick as well. But even though I like this as a single choice, I'm really hoping Tequila does ends up getting pushed one day. Cause my old pal Patron I feel like that's becoming the sleeper cool song on the album. I mean, I'm seeing its streams do really well. I'm seeing it on some good playlists from some people with good taste. The vibe of it feels like Willie Nelson in the beginning and it's got this kind of Texas country groove. I would love for Tequila Does to become sort of the it track from this record after this. And speaking of Texas music, let's talk about this new group, The Panhandlers, and their first single, No Handle. I am just a man. So the Panhandlers are a new super group of sorts coming out of the Texas red dirt scene and it's made up of four guys. Josh Abbott of the Josh Abbott Band, William Clark Green, Cleto Cordero who is the lead singer of Flatland Cavalry who it's no secret I am a big fan of, and then John Bauman who is a singer and songwriter that I first heard of when Kenny Chesney cut his song Gulf Moon for his album Song of the Saints. I adore the song Golf Moon, and I was like, who wrote this? The words in this are amazing. Down by the jetty near the Balinese Pier, the curmudgeons all drink the yellow belly beer. Turned out to be John Bauman, and he turned out to be in the Panhandlers. So the Panhandlers are going to be putting out an album. They're going to be playing some festival dates. I don't know if they're going to tour beyond that. And they have put out their first single, which is called No Handle. And this is a song about being in West Texas in the Panhandle and having no handle on what you are doing here. There's a lot of handle happening. I think it's actually a really clever song lyrically. There's kind of a lot of really funny lines. At one point, William Clark Green is describing being out in the middle of nowhere and he says, it can drive you to drink or drive you to think that the flat earthers know something after all. I love that line because I feel like it works on the level of describing flat earthers as maybe being at a UFO museum out in the West and tinfoil hat territory, but it also works just in the earth being flat out in that part of Texas, which as someone that is from Virginia and went to Texas a few years ago for the first time, I was like, damn, there is no elevation changes here. The vibe of it feels a little bit kind of like 60s rock inspired where there's a little bit of Mexican influence in there too, but it's very much like a red dirt, solid country sound. And I actually was reading about uh, this band in Rolling Stone. They had a piece and they said that they recorded it all around one mic. And I feel like that really comes through because the song does have a sort of sing-along vibe to it that's very jovial. So I'm here for the Panhandlers. I'm so excited to see what else they put out and I'll be listening to it along with you. Thank you. 